So in this video, this man is describing the bus driver exercise as the rotator cuff destroyer. I think this is a very common misconception about how shoulder impingement actually works, especially if we consider the work by Giphart and colleagues in 2012, which showed that a shoulder impingement, so contact between the acromion and the supraspinatus was physiologically impossible beyond 70 degrees of elevation. And this exercise happens at 90 degrees. I go into more detail in a podcast I did recently with Ranger Strength, so I'll link that after if you're curious. Yeah. Uh, the the easiest way I phrase it with patients when they worry about the impingement is that it's like, hey, impingement's kind of normal. It's it's kind of like having if when you, you do a deep squat, you're gonna get compressive stress at your knee. But mm -hmm. are you gonna call it compression at the knee syndrome? Right. No, you're gonna call it knee pain. But for shoulders, for some reason, we're like, oh no, there's compression. It's it's bad. It's like not really. And um, if you look at the work by Yamamoto, the study in 2016, um, and he looked at people who had like some tears, right? And he looked, uh, it was a prospective study. So he looked way further in time to see if the tears had progressed or not. And he looked at like risk factors. So he saw that like heavy, heavy laboring or like training, like doing powerlifting stuff like that was not related to tear progressions or the apparition of new tears. So if you look at, if you put that together with the research by Rebecca Lawrence that I mentioned earlier, where uh, we see like 45 to 50% of people have uh, shoulder impingement, like contact between the acromion and the rotator cuff tendon you'd see a lot more progression of the tears if impingement was something to worry about in the group that did heavy laboring or uh like powerlifting or weightlifting right because you'd be constantly compressing it with high loads but there was no difference between the two groups so the implication is that either it's not a big thing or with appropriate rest your tendon does adapt and uh year in 2021 like did a study and they, she showed that your dominant leg is like thicker tendons so there's some biological plausibility to it and there's other papers showing that tendons do adapt not as much as muscles like not at all but they do adapt so my bias and the way i usually explain is that if you had to take a guess at the literature right now is that tendons do maintain homeostasis 